Thank you. All right, man, we are officially live. Welcome to the Agent Revolution podcast. My guest today, 4610, Fred and Kevin, so happy to have you, man. And thank you for taking a couple minutes out of your day to uh, to to chat with me. Um, you know, first of all, why don't you guys? I think everybody looks at forty six ten and and like I know what it means. If you don't mind, just tell tell everybody what that means, where you got that from. I'm just I'm curious, and I'm sure our audience is curious too. Should, should we tell them it's because we don't want our names on the signs? Yeah, yeah something that like part. that. Yeah, I'll let Kevin go ahead and share that. Go ahead, buddy. I mean, well, the, the, so the, the, here's the deal. True story. But we started working together, and uh, business grew way faster than we thought it would. And um, we needed for sale signs. And I looked at him one day, and I said, "Hey, man, we need some more signs." And uh, my name and number is not going on them. Should we just put your name and number on them? And he looked at me and he said, "Not a chance." And so I said, "Well, we should probably think of a team name." So we came up with a few different things, and. A good buddy of ours had uh, had been teaching a, a series uh, of like real estate courses, and a lot of that he just had different teachings in there. And he had taken that book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. If you've ever read that? Yeah, one of those begin with the end of mind or think with the end of mind. Yeah, he didn't cut it. He had taken all those habits and kind of I don't know if he had decided what uh, what passage in the Bible those would come from. Oh yeah, he or, made it all yeah, up. Yeah, I'm sure I mean, he's smart. He up. made it all up, yeah. But so. he had said, he essentially had told us that begin with in mind or think with in mind was from Isaiah 46.10. So uh, we literally, especially back then, doing all short sales, like you had to really think what was going to happen six, nine months, 10 months down the road in the transaction because that's how long it took then. Um, and so we said, what about group 4610? Because we love that. Because Kevin wanted mind. to give Bibles out for our closing gifts. And I said, that would be perfect. So, we did. We used to just smack um, people right upside down. No, it, it really wasn't a religious statement at all. It was literally just this idea. We wanted to begin with the end in mind. And this uh, Spanish pastor friend of ours had just, you know, taken his uh, his view of, of that. So we get some uh, funny stories about it, man. We get some people that uh, absolutely love it. We get some others that question it. And me, no. most people that don't say a darn thing about it. So anyway, that's how we came with Group 4610. And then you just name yourself, so then you can't change it. So then you're out of luck. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. So just so you know, um, I set this podcast up as kind of a platform for, um, for agents uh, to come on and share their unique story about uh, transitioning over to eXp um, to help maybe other agents who are thinking about moving or wanting to learn more about eXp. And so, you know, with that, why don't we just get right into it? I'll, I'll spend a couple, not a long time on, 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 uh, on your past and how you got into real estate and all that stuff. But I really want to talk about the meat and potatoes of, of your transition over to eXp. So um, how long have you guys been in real estate as, as, uh, as a partnership? So I got licensed in 2004. Kevin got licensed in 2007. We know each other because uh, I went to school with his wife way back in the day. That's how we kind of got connected. And we partnered together in February of 2008. So wow. coming up here on 11 years, it's it's worse than marriage. Uh, we survive it each and every day, though. And uh, I had a full and, head of hair then. Yeah, Ke Kevin actually, uh, I was at Century 21 and he had just got He still has the jacket. It's awesome. It was that beautiful Brad Pitt hair, right? Where the, where the hairline is real straight. Yeah, yeah, I know. Jacket, it's it's amazing. Yeah. He wears it on Sunday. <laughs> you haven't shaved in a while. Like, this is ridiculous over here. I don't know if you guys can see this. But anyway, so I, I was at Century 21. He gets a license. He says, I'm going to go check out your brokerage and a few others. And Kevin ended up recruiting me over to Keller Williams unknowingly. Uh, so I went and joined Keller Williams in the same month he did and left my brokerage. And uh, we uh, were at Keller Williams for 11 years from June of 2007 all the way to June of 2018. And uh, so that's a little bit about us. Gotcha. Gotcha. So what was your volume last year? Um, just, I mean, as, as both production and, and number of units collectively as an expansion team. Yeah. Uh, we did um, uh, slightly under 150 million in volume. It was 149 million and change, and the unit count was 552. 552 units. Wow, so 552 units, a hun almost 150 million bucks. That's and a credit to a lot of people not named Kevin and Fred, though, because I don't think the two of us zero. combined for more than like one of those that's sales. That's zero of these listings. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And and honestly, I mean, I. I'm a, a, a Keller Williams transplant as well. And, you know, you guys are, are doing what we're, we were trying to do really at a, at a much higher level. 
Um, so certainly you've kind of been a mentor of ours from afar and, um, you know, it, it was so happy. Uh, we were, we were so happy when you, you know, you decided to, to join EXP. It's just, um, you know, every day is a different day now and you just wake up more excited with, uh, all of the opportunity and not that we've never, you know, we've never said anything bad about Keller Williams and probably never will. Uh, we thought that was a great platform for us to come in and start out and grow our business. Um, and, and we just felt it was, you know, time for a change. But so for you guys, um, how is your business? This is a little complicated, I think, for, for probably a, a large majority of the audience. Uh, when you start talking about expansion, um, Keller Williams will definitely identify with that conversation. So for you guys right now, how is your team currently structured uh, into as an expansion team in, 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 its, in its different marketplaces? Yeah, it's a great question. And the true honest answer is it seemingly is structured differently about every year. If, I, if I'm being honest, I, I, and when I say that, what I mean is that um, we've gone through lots of different models. We're consistently yeah. tweaking and trying to figure out the best model or adapt to the people that we have in a certain location. Um, but I mean, from an overall standpoint, uh, Kevin are, and I are not licensed in every uh, location that we sell real estate. Group 4610 sells real estate. So we've got some form of leader. You can call that person a regional leader. You can call it a lot of different names. And we've called it a lot of different names over the years. And that particular role has changed. At one time, that person was just an expansion agent that went out and sold houses. That person for us was in 2014, Aaron Lobovic. Actually, tomorrow is our four-year anniversary with Aaron Lobovic. Is that uh, like the diamond anniversary? I think it is. is. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so four years tomorrow, we'll have been selling real estate in uh, Denver, Colorado with Aaron. And, uh, and he took a risk on us and he continues to take a risk with us every single uh, day and every single year. And, and uh, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. But um, how that all started, Mike, was like he, he was selling real estate, uh, but not, not very much of it. He was actually kind of on the foreclosure side of things doing some stuff. We decided to partner with him. Uh, in four months, he sold one house to his mom. And, uh, and then he started selling real estate from the leads we were providing and the help we were giving him. And then he got too busy. So we had to, he had to hire other people. So we had to go help him do that. And uh, so that, I mean, I'm just giving you a rough sense of kind yeah. of how it started. It didn't start as this grand business idea. It started out as like, could we do this? Would it work? Would it make it work? And what we found over time is that um, our model, we, we really like to have multiple agents inside of a market. So we basically like to find a strong leader who can build a team around them or with them inside of a market that's inside of our team, if you will. Yep. And that's kind of been our model. There's a lot of different models out there. Um, we've tried a lot of them. Um, some work, some don't. We're constantly tweaking, but that's kind of a, a sense of sort of how we've done it. Okay. It, you know what I'm, I think I'm most curious about is is when logistically, you I think of it like we moved a 15 person team over and you guys have how many in your organization? Uh, we're north of 50 in our organization today. We've been as big as 115. We, we've been as small as the two of us. I mean, yeah. like, so we've, we've been all over the board. Yeah. And, and so the question that really that, I mean, that obviously comes to mind with me is like, okay, we moved 15 people over and it was, I don't want to say it was easy. It was definitely, um, it was definitely not easy, but moving, I mean, moving 50 people over, um, the conversations that had to be had, uh, logistically, the things that had to be changed. I mean, how does, how does that even start? I mean, obviously, it starts with you guys, but where does it go from there? Well, yeah, I think if you don't mind us backing up, and I, not to avoid your question, but maybe just to give a little bit more context behind stuff. I mean, Kevin and I are super grateful to Keller Williams and all we learned, as you said. But, you know, be honest with you, uh, over the last year, 18 months, we just didn't resonate with a lot of the messaging and things that were going on there. Not vehemently disagree, just didn't resonate with it. It just didn't feel like home. Like I'm looking at your screen right now, right? And you got that big home sign in the back there. And like I, we say that, it just it started to feel less and less like home to us. It wasn't our place anymore. It wasn't our place anymore. And it doesn't mean that it's not a place for other people and everything else. It just wasn't our place anymore. And so... We spent a lot of time um, going out and looking at options and seeing what was out there. And I will tell you, um, I think the first thing for any agent who's wanting to grow their business is to be willing to look inside the walls of what they have and press in really deep, but also be willing to go outside the walls. So there's a lot of agents that they're just going to broker hop because 
they think the problem is the broker and they haven't identified that they might actually be the problem. Uh, but if you're willing to press into what your broker has and you're still feeling like this isn't home, then you, you kind of get outside your walls, right? Like you and I did. And we were amazed at what was out there. And, I, and when I say that, I don't just mean EXP because to be very honest with you, um, I was like very much against EXP for the longest time. So I'm on record, Mike, if you don't know, as literally saying I would never go to EXP. I'm on record as calling Curtis Johnson crazy for going to EXP. I was and, and still, um, I guess, can be turned off by some of the ways that people inside EXP are doing business. But that's true of every organization. And I had to get over my own judgments. But I was not even willing to look at EXP for the longest time. Like not even I wouldn't get on a webinar. I wouldn't talk to anybody about it. I, I literally was very much, as we like to say, because I said this to Curtis once, I, I was a hell no to EXP. Yeah. And um, it wasn't until May, literally, it wasn't until May of this year, that's only a couple months ago, that I was willing to sit down with Curtis Johnson and hear him out on why he made the move and what his last three or four months of experiences at EXP had looked like yeah. and really was able to go, Curtis, like, I got to know, man, why would a guy like you move? Because my impression of EXP was it's the place that non-producers go. And I'm not saying I was right. I'm just saying that's that was my impression. I saw some agents that went to the company that were shouting from the rooftops how amazing it was rather than selling real estate. And I just thought that's where non-producers went. But when I peeled the onion back and finally got Curtis to talk to me about the model or I was finally willing to listen to him, I went, dang, like this model is actually that's built badass. to attract and retain producers and create producers. Like this model is all about production and growth but I got tripped up by some people, if you will, that I just judged and I judged the entire company, you know, based on a few people, which call me dumb for doing that. I did it. I'm guilty of it. So anyway, I just wanted to like kind of say that. Right. So um, so after we were willing to look at the model, then then the question you're asking is like, how do you move 50 people or how do you approach that? I mean, you and I had some requirements. We said if we're going to leave our current brokerage, a few things have to happen. Yeah, I would say like that, that's the other piece we had to go back to is. We started looking for a new home a year ago, mm -hmm. and we started interviewing plenty of brokerages, some regional, some national, um, explored doing our own thing. We actually opened up a few different entities. We were going independent at one point earlier this year, um, and we were very clear on two things had to happen if we were going to move brokerages. Uh, number one was, it, and this was first and foremost, it had Literally, to be a financial road. win for our agents. Okay. Because last year, Keller Williams, we paid in just way too much money. And, and and it's not Keller Williams' fault. It's just that it's a franchise system. And so when you're in a bunch of different franchises, and you've got to, like, everybody wants their share of the pie, and rightfully so. And that's why it's hard to do expansion in a franchise system, because this franchisee wants their fair share. You know, they want their full cap, and this one wants their full cap, and then they, they want to take it out of whatever split they want to take it out. So. We just wanted to level the playing field and make it a financial win for the agents. We wanted to be yeah. seen as one company across multiple locations and right. not in Rather a bunch of small individual teams that were like being a taxed like team that. in each one. And so, it, and it was a tax. And so we said, okay, so it's got to be a financial win. And then number two, it's got to be one brokerage per state. Like no more of this, like I'm dealing with two different brokerages that are, that are 30 miles apart from each other. And now I have to have different advertising, different websites. I've got to play by different rules in the MLS is all these different complications that people don't think about when they go to expand. And it's, you know, expanding down the road or down the street is not nearly as easy as, as uh, some people make it sound because of that. Like once you've got to go into a second brokerage that's owned by a different bro ownership group and has a different designated broker, mm -hmm. you've got a whole new set of problems that quite frankly, most people aren't prepared to deal with on the legal side. Yeah. You know, um, Fred, one thing that you said that really, I'm going to back up now. One thing that yeah. you said that really resonated with me is the fact that, you know, I, and I wrote this down, you were a hell no to EXP. And it's so funny because, you know, I, I think that like me, for instance, when I first heard about EXP, I heard about it from people like you heard about it from. It was the people that, you know, stood at the mountaintop and said, hey, join EXP. It's the greatest company in the world. But they didn't actually do anything. You know what I mean? So really what, what it came down to for me is like influence. I think like I, yeah. there, when, I, when I saw people like Jay Kinder, Cujo, all these guys that were, were moving over, I knew um, that these are, these are the smartest guys in the business, man. And you know, if they're looking at it and saying, 
you know, I can't poke any holes in this model, then something, it, it was certainly something that we should take a look at very seriously and do our due diligence with. So to your point, I, you know, we were kind of the same way. We heard about it. We heard about it. We just, we kind of turned our nose up at those people. And, um, and, and then when, when, when we started seeing some of these more influential people move over, then we started to look more closely at it. And, and, you know, it sounds maybe that was kind of like what what you went through, I guess. Well, yeah, and and I want to be you know careful to also say this. Like, I'm not ripping on every agent that joined the company before us to say that you know it was only agents ten to twelve thousand that were the quality ones. The first ten thousand were garbage. Like, I would never say that. Like, not at all. But um, there's a there's a problem in any company when you think that you can recruit people to a company. Like, you can talk somebody into something. And so early on, I think there was a lot of people in a new company, such as EXP, feeling like they needed to talk others into why they were making a mistake staying where they're at. And the, the reality is, you're just never gonna, you're never gonna talk somebody. You're not into gonna that. convince somebody into something. You're not, you're not convincing somebody to change their religion. You're not convincing somebody to go. You know, like that's a, that's an emotional decision, right? There has to be a desire to want to grow, want to change, want more be unhappy potentially with what you have or think that it's not enough. Uh, but you can attract people to it. And that's what, what, you, what you're saying, Mike, is that there's been a lot of people that have been very attractive in the industry that have gone over to EXP. Curtis being the one that was in our world closest to us, that we went, man, we've known this guy for 10 plus years. Like, he's an attractive guy. Like, I mean, his red hair is beautiful. I mean, <laughs> I'm very jealous of it. Uh, very short, you know, attractive little dude. And a uh, little tie, you know, but no, I mean, this is a guy that's closing a couple hundred houses a year. Why would he up and up and move his team? He's been his own brokerage, right? So that was sort of the idea. And, and I think that um, as agents who may be watching this that are currently with eXp, like, I think we need to check ourselves a little bit about the messaging that we're giving about the company and how strong we're, we're telling the story. Like, I love being here telling the story, but I'm also the first guy that will tell you this company's not for everybody. And I also don't think that I can win anybody logically into joining the company. I hope that people go, what's going on over there? Uh, enough so that they want to look under the hood. They want to look behind the curtains like we finally did in May of this year. And I think when you do that, you then will see that there's actually a lot of substance to this model. Um, there's a lot of great people in this company. And, you know, a model's just not enough either, Mike. I, at the end of the day, like a model's great uh, and the model should be awesome. But the people that associate with the model are also what, what typically grows a company. Yeah. And um, anyway, I mean, we got to yeah, somebody said we, we were in an event last week, right? And somebody said the biggest risk you have with EXP is an ego risk. And that really struck for me because like it was a big ego check for the two of us to go, dang, I've told so many of my friends I would never go there. I've publicly said it to a few people like and so to 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 literally rip off the bandaid, the ego bandaid and be willing to go, that's going to hurt a little bit. But now that I've seen it, I don't think I can unsee it. Now that I see what it's going to do for our team and our agents and the opportunity it creates for us as business owners, I couldn't go back. Yeah. So, all right, Fred. So you, we've heard how, you know, when you heard about EXP, um, how you were a hell no at first. And, and we can talk, I'll, I want to talk a little bit more about kind of um, what you went through mentally to get to a hell yes. But Kevin, so you heard about EXP. Which one of you heard about it first? I probably did just because I, I pay attention a, a little more to what's going on in the industry and have, you know, have a lot of relationships and kind of see what's going on out there. So I probably heard about it first and, and uh, um, I, it would be my guess. And so, okay. So what was your reaction then when you heard about it? Not, not too dissimilar. Very, very turned off at first. Just um, disinterested. Yeah. Just what, disinterested. How I would describe I, you because I was like, tell me why we should consider it. And yeah. Like there wasn't enough interest there. Yeah. Right? And, and the, you know, the thing was, is that, um, yeah, there wasn't enough interest for me to like even really consider it at first. And I was, in, in some ways I was still happy with, with where we were. Uh, and I thought we, we were at the best place for us. Um, but I mean, but over time, like I started, I did start to wonder, you know, earlier this year, just from a few phone calls I had with some friends that actually weren't even with the company, but had explored it themselves and went, you know, what about this? And, and I started to wonder, like, man, are we, are we missing something here? Like, are we missing an opportunity that we really should be paying attention to? And um, so I started, to, I started to wonder a little bit about that. So when Curtis came calling, uh, not not came calling, like, the reality is Curtis, we, we meet up with Curtis all the time and, and, uh, and hang out fairly often and have for 10 plus years. And so when we had lunch in May, um, we were ready to hear about it. 
Like I, I'll just put it that way. We were just we were just ready to hear about it. I, I said to him at some point before that, I said, you know, Curtis is probably gonna want to talk about EXP because we told him last time we talked to him, like, let's see how you like it once you're there. Um, and at that point, I had definitely gotten to the point where I, I was more open about it. Um, and so we listened to Curtis's experience and we're like, wow, that's awesome. Let's let's consider this. I, to be truthful, I was probably I was probably in or sold that day. We had two or three more meetings uh, and really looked at a few other things and poked some holes before we had made an official decision. Talked to a few of the key people in our company, uh, and then we, you know, made it official. But like mentally, I was probably there after that meeting. So, what was the timeline then for you guys? Like, once you heard about it, to okay, I think we're I think we're ready to make the move. What was the timeline there? Uh, we, I mean, we did it in less than a month and a half from the time we, we finally did, sat we down. We did it in like five Curtis. weeks, but the part yeah. of that problem is uh, the, the key that our key person in Colorado, as Fred mentioned, Aaron, yeah. he was out of the country for four of those five weeks. And, and, yeah. and you and I had a and KW we, event that we wanted to go attend, just like we said, you know what, like we've already signed up for this, we're already planning on going to it. Like we Let's haven't, oh, haven't 100% made a decision, we hadn't joined. Well, at that we point. really hadn't. Made a hundred percent. No, not at, at all. That point. We had, I think, we were both leaning that way, but we also were kind of hoping, like, you know, maybe we'll go to this event and we'll hear some stuff that you know made us fall in love with this place in the first place, and we won't want to leave, and we won't have to bother with this headache of moving because this moving's a pain in the ass, right? We can all agree with that. I don't mm -hmm. care what company you move to, and uh, so nobody wants to do it, and so we went to this point. You know, we went to this to this event, and we left going. Even if EXP isn't right, this neither is this. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta make this move. Like we have to take a risk here. Wow, that's awesome, man. So I mean, okay, so the, so that leads. I guess that's a great segue into okay. So you guys have decided at this point. Um, the next step is obviously you've got all these people, all these different entities um, that you've got to now approach. So what does that look like? Uh, it's, it started with going to our key leaders. So across all the States and locations we're in, we, uh, um, a couple of them we had face-to-face -face conversations with a couple of them we did some zoom meetings with. Um, and then before we made any final decisions, we brought all the leaders of our company into one place for an uh, all day meeting where we explored and asked questions and, uh, and made sure that we were fully comfortable with where we were going and what we were doing. So, you know, what's funny though, is that um, we were a little nervous about how our team would respond and the people that have been with us the longest that we have embraced the most that, you know, create the most revenue with us and for us. Um, those people were like incredibly excited. Like I'll never forget Aaron, like telling us our Denver guy, he's he, like, he literally said, oh, thank God. I was hoping you guys would be considering this place. And, and he knew we were out looking. He knew we were open to a change, but we had not previously been open to EXP. And so when we told him we were going to do it, we were like, ah, he's going to think we're like, you know, here we are. We told him we probably would never go to EXP. And now here we are telling him we want to go. What's he going to think about us? And he goes, thank God. Like that was his response. Literally said, thank God. Those were the first words out of his mouth. That is nuts, man. What's, and you know, what's so neat about that is like, um, it's sort of like, like for us, like when we were getting ready to, when, when we first heard about EXP, we were actually in the middle of opening up a market center um, here in Southwest Ohio. And so we were, we were going through the motions with the regional directors and, 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 you know, so, you know, Kinder was a guy that I had known from NAEA and I had heard about it from, he, and, and so, you know, that's when we started doing our research, but What's great is like when I approached my partner, I, I, I'm partnered with a guy named John Puelski. And when I approached him, um, I went to him and he said, yeah, he said, we've, we've looked at it before. And I'm like, are you serious? And so like, but it, what's, what's cool about that is like, we're all like-minded people, you know what I mean? And so we're, we're, we don't just see what's going on in Dayton, Ohio or Cincinnati, Ohio. We're constantly looking um, for, not change, but we're, we're trying to keep a pulse on what's going on in the industry. And when something piques our interest like this, um, you know, like-minded people, they do their research. And when they do their research, like we all did, then, you know, we move and that's what we did. And, and so for you guys, ultimately, what was that, what was that reason? So you went to your key leaders, 
and you got buy-in from them. Um, what was when you got the feedback from them and they said, you know, yeah, we're in. Um, what was ultimately the reason that EXP made the most sense versus Keller Williams being an independent or any other brokerage? Well, I go back to something Kevin said earlier. Uh, it, it met the first two boxes on our on our must have list, right? Number one, our agents had to keep more of the money they were making, so we wanted to essentially pay less to the brokerage or company we were a part of. Not because we're not grateful for it, but just because we felt like it's half a million dollars. We much. felt like a half a million dollars that we paid into our previous franchise was too much last year. And so we we went looking for that. So we checked that box. We said, look, agents are going to keep more money. Not only are they going to have like a lower cap in this system, uh, but they're also going to keep 80% of their check and only give 20% to the company for company dollar versus a majority of KW offices are 70, 30 plus a 6% royalty. So And that's and, the same everywhere because like that's the other thing is, you know, that split would might have been was actually better than, than 80 20 in some places, but it was most much worse than most others. So keep and 80% you know, of your check or keep 64% of your check, you know, and then pay in less. And, and more importantly, the consistency across every agent. So that way they all feel the same, right? They're all being treated the same, which has been a big deal for us over the years is to, is to kind of have as much sort of sameness, if you will, and, and continuity in the way we operate, no matter what location we're operating in. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's a great point you bring up too, right? Which is like, okay, sure. It made the money piece and then it made the, the check mark of one broker per state. But when we say one broker per state, like there's so many layers to that. It, well, you said it earlier, right? But it's like, Hey, now we're on sky slope everywhere. We're not on dot loop, some on sky slope, some on real wall, ABC system, blah, blah, blah. We have one broker in Arizona instead of, we had four brokers in Arizona at one time with our Arizona expansion, right? And even though it's the same state, believe me when we say they don't all interpret. It might the, as well have been different planets. Yeah, they don't all interpret the rules the same way. They all want stuff to look different, right? So you're just spending all this time, energy, effort, and headaches trying to make that work. Um, and for me, like the opportunity for, for, for our people to be able to create something beyond just selling another house. Like there's a lot of offerings with, with inside of EXP that quite frankly don't get talked about. Everybody knows about the financial piece. Um, but what doesn't get talked about is, hey, how can I how can I improve my uh, my skills? Like the amount of training that's available is huge. The marketing platform is amazing. Like the, the tech that's there and the um, the ability to bring people together and work as one is uh, like the collaboration of this company is unlike anything I've ever seen. And so for the for the for the ability for that to impact not just myself and Fred, but like everybody inside of an organization, that's huge. And then of course the financial piece is like the upside for those that, for those that want to take advantage of, you know, investing some of their commission uh, or, 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 you know, attracting other people to the company. Like those are opportunities that quite frankly, they just don't have somewhere else. And while Fred and I can go out and find them for ourselves, like that, that's cool. That's available to us. This is available to everybody. Yeah. That's awesome, man. You know, that, that again, that really resonates with me because, you know, again, in opening a market center, right, the, the opportunity was there for me. But if I look back and I say, okay, last year in 2017, we sold 309 houses. And of those, I went on 10 appointments. I knew ultimately that the success my team was having was not through me. And so going to a market center and opening a market center, only it, it, it didn't benefit my team it benefited me. And so when I started looking at EXP and we start talking about revenue share, we start talking about stock, I couldn't provide them that at Keller Williams. And so I wanted to be able to not only make a move for, for myself, but also for them because ultimately the vehicle to get to where we want to go was through them. And so when, when we had this opportunity, ultimately that's what helped us make the decision is being able to add those extra layers in of passive income. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we don't talk, a lot. I don't lead with any of this because I, I think it's icing on the cake, right? But you mentioned like you were in the process of buying a market center. Well, you know, buying a real estate franchise, being a franchisee, like it's a, it's a good opportunity. It really is. But let's be honest about what it is. It requires a net worth, right? Like the franchise that you're going to buy from requires some sort of asset statement to see that you have money. It then requires actual capital. So you actually have to buy, you actually have to exchange money. 
And then you also have monthly fees. You have, you, right? You have expenses every month to run that business. You have, you have a big risk. large over. You have a what lot you of have is you have a big risk. A lot of risk, right? And so you look at, at and you also have a, uh, in the franchise world, you have also a the job. territory and a job, right? And so in most franchise systems, um, the, the, the opportunity of buying an office is sold as an opportunity, but truly what you just bought yourself was a high paying job. Uh, oh, versus yeah. in, in this model, and, and that, yeah, I think there's probably some, yeah, we, we can debate model. the high paying yeah. piece later, but um, in this new model that, that Glenn Sanford has built, right, and that other people are growing, uh, you, you don't have to have a big old net worth statement to have the opportunity to attract agents and make money. You don't have to have the upfront capital contribution yeah. Uh, to buy anything. You don't have to just recruit to a physical location. You can actually recruit to as big as EXP gets. You also don't have monthly fees and expenses and, and headaches and overhead to to take care of. Yet the upside is it's bigger. Than is that bigger. The like it's the, the opportunity of growing EXP as an example is actually better than owning a real estate brokerage. Yeah. In my opinion. I heard Brent go say it this way last week, which was, like the thing is, there's no capital risk, right? You can't buy your way into this. You have to build your way into it. And that levels the playing field for everybody. Like, like let's face it, Mike, if you and I want to go out and buy a region, regional territory for any of the franchise companies, okay? Like we don't just have to talk about the one that we were at, but any of them, like that's not necessarily available to you and I. No. Like you can't like, so there's no, there's no, we can't, we can't write a check to get our way into it. But with our, within this system, you and I both can build our way into it, right? Like we, at least you essentially have your own region if you want it. You don't have to. You can just operate the way you're operating, just like you don't have to open a brokerage, but you could and build that, or you could build something that that goes way past state and city lines. Yeah, and when I think about you guys, like because you are uh, were the epitome of of you know making expansion work at a high level um, in KW system. And like, this is like expansion on steroids. I mean, you talk about like, like when you're expanding into different market centers and, and, you know, sometimes, you know, there are different caps. I mean, there, there obviously are different personalities that you're dealing with. Some people are welcome you with open arms and some people, you know, they don't want you in their office. Um, you know, they, they shake their head and say, yeah, we, we would love to have you here, but their actions don't show that, you know, that is actually a reality. But Man, this is like for you guys, you just must be, I mean, this must, I mean, this, you must get out of bed every day and just be like, you know, the world is my oyster now because this is expansion. I mean, you talk about when well, you don't have to deal with all that stuff and you don't have to deal with, um, you know, you know, you know, market centers and the politics that goes on there. I mean, doesn't that, you guys have to just be like, it, completely it's exciting. It is Honestly, when Curtis first talked to us about it, I don't think we even understand the, the depth of what EXP's done. But for anybody watching this, let me give you like a little bit more context. Like EXP has spent years laying a foundation to have one brokerage in every state that is owned by the company, right? Yep. And then they have joined, I, I believe the number is 600 plus real estate boards and growing across the entire country. And there really is no real estate company, franchise, or other brand that can claim that. I believe Redfin, as a wholly owned company, has somewhere in the ballpark of three to 400 MLS subscriptions. So they're a part of three to 400 boards. And certainly a Remax, a Coldwell Banker, a KW could claim they have access to the boards, but the franchisees, franchisees in those companies ha have access to it, right? So even if a company, let's say, for example, a company wanted to go out and try to create a virtual model tomorrow, right? Like the amount of time, energy, and effort to lay the groundwork to be in all those states, to get all those entities set up, to hire all those brokers, and then to become members of all those boards. Like you're talking about a couple of years worth of work. And like I didn't realize that at EXP until I was sitting down with somebody that's in the ah, leadership. It'll be easy. And I went, geez, she goes, no, you don't realize how many years we've spent laying this groundwork and this foundation, right? Like they've laid the eight lane freeway, so to speak, where somebody else may say, tomorrow I wanna to go out and build it, but they're a couple years ahead of any other company that might wanna to try to go build that national freeway around the entire country. So, I mean, you've gotta give them credit that while their growth and their agent count numbers weren't eye popping until maybe the last year or two, the foundational pieces that they laid to then be able to grow at this exponential mm -hmm. level it is out of control. So what does the future look like for you guys? I mean, obviously you, you that like 
I guess the handcuffs have been taken off, so to speak. Like, what what is where where do you plan to go with this now? The gloves were off, the handcuffs are off, everything's off, man. It's like free will, right? So, I mean, at this point, we're really focused on growing our sales team. Like, there's no doubt about that. We truly believe that EXP is the best platform for us to to meet our goals on a real estate sales team platform, um, and we're doing that. So like that is we're, we're back into growth mode. We've added quite a few folks into our transition and uh, potentially looking at our at our next location. As of now, uh, we're starting to get into some deep conversations with some with some candidates in other locations where we hope to hope be able to open up in the next few months. And uh, so, continuing doing what we're really good at, right? Like that's our core business, and then using that to enhance the other opportunities that EXP gives us. And so, we're by no means. Uh, blind to the fact of, of those opportunities. And so we're using what we have to, uh, you know, our influence, our relationships, et cetera, to be able to, to blaze new paths and kind of partner with people and, and, uh, and make this a lot of fun. That's awesome, man. Well, I'll, uh, I'll close it out here. I have just a couple more questions for you. So to that agent or to that broker right now, who's uh, potentially listening to this or watching this, um, who you know is intrigued about the idea of EXP um, and and perhaps knows there's a better way to do real estate. What do you say to that person? Well, I would I'll, I would say um, put aside your judgments, put aside your ego for a minute, and spend thirty or thirty one minutes hearing the model out. Something I wish I would have done a couple years ago. Like I, I just I, I kick myself like for not doing it sooner. I'm not going to dwell there, but I do wish that. I would have at least understood the model at a deeper level. Um, and when I say go spend 30, 31 minutes, uh, if you don't mind me saying, Mike, I think probably the best overview of the company done by somebody we all respect, Brent Gove, um, he's got a video up on a site you can go to if you wanna jot this down. It's it's the new re.com. So I T S T H E N E W R E.com. It's the new re.com. It's a 30, 31 minute video. It's sanctioned by the company, they're totally supportive of it. I think it's the best short explanation that gets like the most uh, depth to what the EXP model looks like. So I'd say you start there, like at least know what the competition's doing, even if you're not interested in joining, or if you go, gosh, I want to know more. That's probably the best overview video you can find. That's yeah, my opinion. And then my other piece is, uh, and this because this was advice given to us when we started looking, was get really clear on what it is that you do want. Like, what does that perfect home look like? Be really clear before you start deciding whether or not where you're currently at is the right place or if uh, or if there's another place out there. Yeah, I actually appreciate you saying that. It was a friend of ours, right? Gave us the suggestion. He goes, right. I want you to pretend like you're uh, like you're looking for the perfect wife or the perfect spouse. Oh, yeah. And I want you to write down a list of all the things that you want in that in that person, a.k.a. your new brokerage. If you are unhappy where you're at or you want more, make the list of the of the perfect you know brokerage spouse. And then as you are out there exploring things, you'll have a clear sense of like what fits and what doesn't fit. Um, so instead of trying to like try to fit yourself into a box and you're not sure what you want, go figure out, get clear on what you want. We were really clear. That's why we said it met, met our requirements and more. Boom. I love it, baby. So, okay. So if, if an agent uh, or a broker has questions about EXP, um, what states are you guys servicing right now and how can people get a hold of you? Yeah, so we're currently in Arizona, Tennessee, Colorado, and California. Um, we love referrals there too, by the way. Um, <laughs> and so easiest way to get in touch with us is either via email at realestate at group4610.com. So this is the word real estate at group 4610com or join our Facebook group, Next Level Agents, which is a, a side project that we started a couple of years ago with a good buddy of ours, Cody. Uh, which is just kind of an online mastermind where we can always be found in there, you know, mixing it up with people and having good, fun conversations about business building stuff for, for real estate. So Next Level Agents uh, Facebook group would be another good place to catch us. Yeah. Find us obviously both on Facebook. Send us a private message if you want. You can um, send him a Marco Polo if you're in there. Yeah, you can send me a Marco Polo. I'm, I'm working on Kevin. You can actually send him one. Um, I'll, I'll tell you how. Just send me a Facebook message. I'll teach him. <laughs> you can download Marco Polo. Right, well, listen, I so appreciate you guys coming on and sharing your story. I mean, I could talk to you guys for an hour, uh, but I know you're busy. And uh, so, you know, thank you so much and uh, look forward to crossing paths again. Awesome. Thanks, man. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Thanks.